the scene has become far too common. A mob swarms the Arco gas station on Alondra and Central in Compton after a vandal breaks open a door. Then, it's a free-for-all. You see some looters with their faces covered, others not even bothering concealing their identity as they ransack the store. They grab everything from... The city of Miami Beach issued a state of emergency after two deadly shootings this weekend. Officials there implemented a midnight to 6 a.m. curfew in the South Beach neighborhood Sunday. <laughs> Chaos in South Beach this weekend. People ran for cover after gunfire erupted Friday night. Outside, restaurants packed with customers on busy Ocean Drive. One man died in the hospital and another was injured. Emergency measures to control a surge in visitors, many traveling to Florida from other cities that were facing COVID lockdown. This right here is what it looked like on the streets of Chicago Saturday night. Large numbers of young people crowding the area of the loop from Michigan Avenue to Clark Street and could be seen jumping on parked cars and smashing windows. Two times, groups of teens were also seen punching, kicking, and stomping on someone on the... One of the things that really just struck me and just kind of just was in my head after watching what happened in Alabama a few days ago, with the, the little mass shooting and four kids killed, 32 others injured. If, if I was, if, if I got to be honest with you, and I am, one of the first things that popped into my mind, one of the first things that popped in my mind after, obviously, you know, you're worried about, you know, if anyone else is injured, hopefully that they'll make it so forth, but who did it? And then kind of surveying the audience that were there, for me, one of the first things that popped into my mind was I wonder what color were the people that did it. I don't know why that 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 that's in my mind right now. Well, I'll tell you why it's in my mind right now. Because it's in everybody else's mind. And everybody's not talking about it. Some folks kind of shine away from it. Because when you turn on the TV and you see this hoodlum, this thug, and I said hoodlum and I said thug, who's out here doing any and everything. All too often, they are, it's somebody of color. Somebody black, more than likely, then next in line, somebody Hispanic. It's become, it's become a problem. It's become a real problem, and I'm not sure if anyone is up to the task to just saying, what should we do about it? There are people that would rather give a wink and a nod, a pass, a slap in the hand, and then blame any and everything else on it. And it's to the point, and here's one of the reasons why, you can't talk about it. One of the reasons why you can't say anything about it is because the largest ethnic group in the country, whites, if they say anything about it, well, then what are they called? They're, they're called racist. And by the way, by the way, this isn't just happening here in America. I did come across clips of something happening in, in Canada. I came across, across some clips of something happening in the UK. So this isn't just here. But since we're here, let's talk about here. White folks will talk about this. Matter of fact, you should talk about it. And you should do so in a way to where you are not made to feel ashamed for thinking and saying what everyone else is thinking and saying. Because can I, can I keep it real with you guys? A, lot of, a whole lot of black folks don't want to be around this foolishness. The problem is just the sheer number, the sheer volume of blacks the disproportionate numbers of blacks and Hispanics, but a lot of blacks. Hispanics are, are I won't say close behind, but, they're, but they're, they're, they're gaining. We are in a morally decayed world, but the truth is we've always been in a morally decayed world. We've always been that way. We've always been a world where Violence was always subject to happen. We've always been in a world where sexual morality ran rampant. Remember, God did destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't do that this century or last century. He did that a long time ago. And so we've always been in a sexually depraved and violent world. That's always been the case. But what's happening now? What's happening now? And they they just recently did a... a a gang violent or gang roundup in New York City. 
And again, who who are we looking at? Look at look at the faces that we're looking at. Alleged members of two violent street gangs were arrested today in a stunning takedown by the Brooklyn District Attorney and the NYPD. CBS 2's political reporter Marsha Kramer says the gangs are accused of operating out of public housing and often stalk their enemies in broad daylight. It is a video that explains the urgency of law enforcement officials to arrest nearly three dozen violent, gun-happy members of the Wu and Cho Street gangs. A gang member in a black hoodie opens fire in broad daylight and a man putting his child into a car. He thinks the man is a rival, but he misses that man. Instead, hits an innocent three-year-old leaving daycare. She was suffered a direct hit into the shoulder area of her body. Believe it or not, the next day the gangbanger bragged about it, posting this video, ironically from a story on CBS2, in a private chat. These individuals want to get credit for the harm that they're doing. DA Gonzalez and Police Commissioner Keyshawn Sewell announced the arrest of 13 members of the Wu Gang and 19 members of the Cho Gang. Now, couple things. One, I don't know if you saw the faces of the people that are arrested. I'll, I'll put them back on the screen in just a second. But there were two babies that were there. The man that was putting his child in the car, he didn't get hit, nor did the baby that he was putting in the car didn't get hit. But the baby who was being walked to school by her father, inter <laughs> interestingly enough, these were two kids who had their fathers there, which is what we want. But this foolishness shows up. The little girl gets hit. Now, thankfully, the little girl is fine. She gets hit in the shoulder area, so she she makes she's making a recovery. But this is how it is. And this idiot, this depraved young fellow, and, and because he's a teenager, does not matter because of what he's doing. He doesn't care who he's shooting at. Doesn't care. No thought, no forethought of any of that stuff. And then to go online, which is which shows his level of intelligence. To go online and to brag about it, which is how they how they caught up with him. But I want to put it back on the screen. Let me put it on the screen and then catch up to that to that moment. Alleged members of two violent thirteen members. So you notice, not not a white person in the group, not an Asian person in the group, not someone of Middle Eastern descent. Now, there are certain blacks, there are certain Hispanics that you just don't find in this. There are some. You don't find Africans, for the most part. When I mean say Africans, I mean Africans, black folks from Africa. You don't seem to find them in this. You don't, you don't even find, now you do find some, don't get me wrong, you do find some, but you, you find a lot less, a, lot, a, a small percentage of blacks from the Caribbean in this as well. But this is us who live here, blacks and Hispanics who live here in this country. And we can claim racism. We can claim the white man. We can claim this. We can claim opportunities. We can claim all these different things. But the people that would have even more of an obstacle to overcome, they're not falling. They're not falling in these traps. They're not falling in these traps at all. Matter of fact, if you go to some of these other countries, some of these Middle Eastern countries, You'll find roving gangs over there as well. But the ones that come here don't seem to have that problem. Makes you wonder, is it just an issue of culture? Well, it's got to be. And for the record, just so people can, can, can understand, in case you have the tint on your computer turned, I'm black. I'm not white. And I'm, I'm just being honest and being real. We got a problem. We have a huge problem, so much so we also need to address the spiritual component of this. Because the question is, are we bringing up an entire, I wouldn't say an entire generation because that's not the case, but are we bringing up a large portion of this generation raising them to be demons? A generation of demons is what we're raising. I'm, and I don't mean just the kids that are in elementary school, junior high, high school, but I mean the the the, the younger twenties. There's there's this culture out there, this subculture, this low culture, this bottom feeding culture that we're feeding into, and we don't have. It's like we. I, I think it's not that we don't have answers. It's that we are afraid to bring up the answers. We 
we have been made to be ashamed of what the truth is for fear of being called racist or Bible thumpers or you name it. I don't know if you heard this there, even with the people that, that seem to have some, some benefits, some advantages laid out for them. I don't know if you've heard this. There's a young fella, not very intelligent at all. Not very intelligent at all. By the way, I want you to know something else as well. I think people think I'm just messing around and just playing when I talk about hair. I really am not. I really am not. There is a component that I think younger folk, people today, don't get this issue with hair. There was a reason why you wanted to make sure that the young man's hair was well groomed. Didn't have to. Obviously, he didn't, if he's 20, if he's 15, he's not going to be bald like me. But even when I had hair, by the way, I was adorable with hair, just in case y'all didn't know. But even with hair, I kept it. I kept it kind of, you know, tight and right. I didn't look like somebody that was on some video or somebody out in the street. Matter of fact, my father wouldn't let that happen. My father would never let that happen. Now, if you had, you know, growing up as my father did in the 40s and so forth, 50s, if you had a small little fro, that's different. But nothing wild and out of, no, not going to happen. And so he wasn't going to let me do that as well. There's a reason why I bring up hair. There is a reason why I bring up hair. Because what hair is showing is you, that's you expressing yourself. And you notice the hairstyles of these people. I, I, I don't want that to escape you. I think that is very important. Why? Because it's a byproduct. Somebody's going to get mad at me, but I know what I'm talking about. It is a byproduct of what's on the inside. The tattoos that you may want to have, the, the clothes that you want to wear, the shoes, the music, the way you talk, the way you wear your hair, all of that stuff, male or female, is indicative of what's on the inside. Say what you want to say, but it just is. Now, does that mean that every every kid with one of these little hairstyles is, is a gangbanger or out? No, that's not what it means. Nor does it mean that every kid that's got a, a nice, short, neat haircut is a straight-A student. That's not what it means. But by and large, yeah, the old saying you can't judge a book by its cover, I don't know who said that. I have no idea who said that. Somebody that, did, somebody that wanted to cover up what was evident in their lives. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You walk by a guy and, and this guy's got a bunch of muscles. You can judge that that guy likes to work out. Someone that is about 700 pounds, you can tell that person likes to eat, not work out. A woman that's dressed a certain way. Yeah, can 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 we can can, can we conclude, can we deduce that, hey, you might not, you're not, I'm not getting virgin vibes off of you. Yeah, let, let's be honest. So you can judge a book by its cover. And let's also be honest, if you see a group of young black males. You got five boys coming your way, five black boys on the other side. Five on that side got just nice uh, tapered haircuts or what have you. And then over here, they got dreads, they got afros, they got all kind of stuff. Which one would you like to take your chances with? So, now I'm not, I'm not downing or demeaning anyone uh, who looks a certain way. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, the fact is, what's on the inside does come out on the outside. It does. Now, I don't know if you heard this story, this, this young fella who has the advantages in life already. He's tall. He plays basketball. Unfortunately, too many of us who are not white are looking to sports to be our outlet to be the way that we're going to make it. Well, this young fella is one of the top basketball recruits in the nation. And the way they have it set up now is that kids, even in high school and in college, can make money. I wish they didn't have that, but hey, you know what? Maybe I'm, Maybe it's past my, uh, past my time. Maybe it's past my time. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's what it is, but this young fella, and some of you guys may disagree. I'll give you opportunity to state your points as we go further on. Uh, the brother here says the Fox news, Fox news spin of Christianity. Well, just maybe, maybe now tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm wrong. So you gotta do just, Hey, you know what? I disagree. Here's why, but notice this young fella here, this young fella here is on his way or was, we don't know what's going to happen now, on his way to the University of Memphis. But on his way, and he's making money now, he signed a contract with Puma. Whatever you think about Puma, he's got money in the bank because of that. And so what does he decide to do? Young man named Mikey Williams. 
Cedar High School basketball star Mikey Williams pleads not guilty to felony charges, including assault with a firearm. The 18-year-old University of Memphis commit made his first appearance in front of a judge this morning. He was arrested in Hamul last week, and police saying Williams got into an argument and then shot at a car that drove away. No one was hurt. He faces up to 28. Now, this kid was, we don't know what's going to happen. Don't know what's going to happen, but why do you have a gun? Why, why, why do you have a gun and you're out there shooting at somebody? That I, I, I do not know. Let me read this. He says, racist. Having, reflecting, or fostering that the belief that race is a fundamental deter determinant of human traits and capacity. Well, no one's saying that race isn't. Um, but let's just be honest. People that look like us tend to gravitate towards other folks that look like us. And when we gravitate towards folks that look like us, a lot of us didn't have some commonalities, certain music, certain way, certain lingo, the way we want to move and so forth. And we want to kind of keep that vibe going. We want to kind of do that. We want to be black, right? If somebody who is black looks exact like, like me or you, but then thinks or acts differently, what is he? He's, he's not black. No, no, he's not black. Uh, because this person has a, I'm not saying you're saying this, but this is something that's been pre pre prevalent in the black community for a while, that if this person has a firm grasp on the Eng English language, you know, the language that we all speak, that we've been speaking forever, and many of us don't have a firm grasp on it, if, if he or she does, he's talking white. Because talking inappropriately is the incorrect, I mean, talking inappropriately is the way that we're, we're, that we're supposed to do it. We're not supposed to talk proper. And so here's the problem. The, the, uh, Mario, you are indicative of the problem. Oh, white kids shooting up churches, grocery stores, and more, and you turn a blind eye every time. No, I do not. No, I do not. But let me ask you a question, though. Mario, do you think it's more of an epidemic in the white community or the black community? You tell me. You tell me when 13% of the population is responsible for 60% of the violent crime, and that's increasing. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, Michael. I, I, I get you now, Michael. I'm sorry. I, I, I mistook what you're saying. But you tell me, how does 13% of the population account for 60% of the violent crime? About 50% of the murders. It should, shouldn't it be the other way around? Problem is, people want to make excuses. You'd rather make excuses than step up and face reality. Because I can promise you, Mario, I don't know where you live at, Mario, but I can promise you, you'd much rather be around a whole bunch of rowdy Asian kids than a whole bunch of rowdy black kids. Let's just tell the truth, shame the devil. Why? Because when 70 some percent of our rowdy black kids are likely not to have a father at home, they don't know how to act. They don't know how to act. Some of y'all saw this, this happen, uh, this, young, this young lady who decides that her phone is more important than respecting the teacher. Why does the rules not apply to everybody else? That's my phone. Everybody. No, you did not keep nobody else's phone. And you finna give me my Don't touch me. That's on my phone. Oh, oh, oh. Now, I can confirm, happily confirm, that the little girl got a beat down. The little girl got exactly what she deserved. Uh, if you ever, if you just look at the video, at the very end, she's screaming and she's like, "Hey, is y'all gonna y'all gonna help me?" No, no, we don't want what she just gave you. You were out of line and you got put back in line. Now the teacher's probably gonna <laughs> lose her job, but I bet she feels good about losing that job. I bet you. This is the problem. I would never have imagined, never have imagined hitting one of my teachers. Never. This little girl to know what, what life is like. Most of these kids don't know what life is like. And you all think, some of you all think that just because you've got video games and you've got iPhones and Android phones, don't know why you have Android phones, but you've got all these creature comforts, you've got all these things, and that because you can express yourself on Facebook and TikTok and wherever else, that the, the world is going to respect you. What we are, be honest with you, especially Western civilization, is we are the laughing stock of the world. While we are preparing our soldiers to be indoctrinated to, for the men to accept being women, other countries like Russia, other countries like China, they're 
telling their men, you better be men. They're making sure they understand what it's like to be men. Not here in America. Our boys can be gay or violent. Either or, doesn't matter. Gay or violent. You can't be religious. You, you, you can't be Christian. No, no, can't be that. Because if you are that way, then you're going to have people like my brother earlier who are going to want to point to another segment of society. I didn't say that white folks don't don't commit crime. I didn't say that at all. I didn't say Asians don't commit crime. I didn't say Ethiopians. I didn't say I didn't say Eskimos don't. I didn't say I didn't say people from Afghanistan don't. I didn't say any of that stuff. What I am talking about is what is a bad ep white folks didn't shut down Miami Beach. White folks didn't shut down Chicago, the the fame magnificent mile. White folks didn't do that. And guess what? It's not just in Chicago or Miami or New York. This right here, this is Tampa. Many have their faces covered. Others are clearly smiling as they rush inside the store and start looting and causing damage. In the footage, you can see people grabbing televisions and trying to get into cash registers. Tampa 911, what is the address of your room? Uh, we're getting break, break into CVS on 30th and Fowler. Right. The sheriff's office and the Tampa Police Department are investigating more than 40 businesses that were set on fire, damaged, or burglarized during the unrest of the last two weeks. We got a bunch of kids going into these establishments and just bum rushing places so that nobody can control, which is why you see a lot of these companies, like, and they've been doing it though, and they were told that's being racist, say nobody or no more than one or two in at, at this particular point in time under this particular age unless you're accompanied by an adult. That's being racist. No, it's being smart, which is now as Chicago, as Portland about Walmart moving out. I don't have to come in and, and service a community that doesn't value my stuff. Bye. Bye. And they should. Who would do that? See, we're the people. Can I? Can, see, I, I, I can see somebody saying something uh, about me. Um, I'm an Uncle Tom or this or that or whatever. But again, I'll put my black life up against your black life. I'll put my hood life up against your hood life. I'd like to just keep it real. I'd like to be honest. And matter of fact, Lisa said something too. She said something. Uh, it's the music industry putting spells on. It is. We let these kids listen to God knows what. Just horrible stuff. Degrading stuff. If your child is listening to rap, you might want to just take it and throw it away. My, my daughter, bless her heart, she, she, and I, I get it, I get it. Teenagers want their privacy. My wife said, okay, Corey, let's make sure that we give her her privacy in this way or that way. Let's, let's make sure, let's make sure that. But I did tell her, you don't have privacy. You, you, you get private, your privacy that you get is a privilege. Some of you guys give your kids a little too much. Mario, I need you to pay attention, brother. Now, now you are the focus. Mario says, my kids don't act like that, but we always hear blacks are the problem, the dirt of the earth. No, Mario, listen, brother, do what you have not done in a while. Pay attention, because I didn't say that. My kids don't act like that. My kids are wonderful kids. We're not talking about my kids or your kids. We're talking about something that's an epidemic. You do understand what an epidemic is, right? You do understand when, when COVID broke out, just because you didn't have COVID didn't mean other folks didn't have COVID. Just because you don't have cancer, doesn't mean cancer is not a problem. Just because you don't have heart disease, doesn't mean heart disease is not a problem. Are you following along, Mario? Stop being this ridiculous sounding black man who doesn't want to pay attention to the world. You're the problem. Or not the problem, but you're part of the problem. Because you think that, well, they do it, they're not doing it as much. They're not doing as much. I understand. I understand. You're right. Sin is the problem. And what's happening with, with the amount of sin in the black community? Let's just be honest. Keep it 100. As we say, keep it a buck as the kids say, whatever, whatever the little vernacular is. But let's just be honest about this. When you turn on the TV and they're doing a gang sweep, who are they sweeping up, Mario? If, it's some, if, if someone shot up something, Mario, by the way, let's just let's just deal with, with Mario. Where do you live, Mario? Where 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 does Mario I don't need to know your, your address, but I mean what city, what state do you live in, Mario? Because 
I think we're going to find something in your locale. Love to know where you live, Mario. I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet you're not. You don't live in Idaho. I'm willing to bet. Has anyone heard of the rash of of gang violence taking place in Idaho? You live in Michigan. How far? Is, how far is Brown Town? I have no idea where Brown Town is. Where, where where is that? But I think you do understand what's happening in Detroit. My brothers grew up in Detroit. Well, as we, I used to pick on them, but it was true. Now this was, listen, this was in the eighties. We called it, we called Detroit 40 miles of ghetto because that was then. That was when they had 1.5 million. Now they're down to 700,000, 600,000, whatever it is. You know why? Because black folks said, you know what? And it was the majority of them. I'm leaving. Bye. Bye. What's happening in Chicago? Folks are leaving. New Orleans, l- l- Baltimore, leaving. St. Louis, leaving. If you can't beat them, some folks say join, but no, if you can't beat them, you might want to just leave them, get, get away from them. But that happened in Tampa. Tampa is not known as a haven for crime. Now, there's crime everywhere. There's crime in Iowa. There's crime in Maine. Not a lot in Maine. There's crime in Dallas. There's crime in Houston. There's crime in Phoenix. There's crime in Indianapolis, especially the east side. There's crime in New York, St. Louis. There's crime everywhere. But this was Tampa. Tampa's not known for that. People have lost their mind. And I mean lost their mind. One of the things, and by the way, guys, on on next week, in about a week, we're going to have a, a guest panel, and we're going to talk about this, not just me with some other people. We're going to talk about what's happening, but also what could be the solutions, by and large, which won't ever take place because, by and large, we won't come together and do it, but what could we do individually? What could the church do, and what could we do, and what do we have to look forward to? I'm going to cover a little bit of that in just a little bit, but by the way, by the way, by the way, um, Maybe if we had a little bit more discipline. You know, you know what the Bible says about discipline somebody that does something? Look at this verse. It says, if a thief, this is Exodus 22 too. If, a, if the thief is caught while breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there will be no blood guiltiness. That means if you catch him in the act and you beat the crap out of him, you kill him, eh, well, he had it coming. Now, if, if he gets away and the sun rises, you don't go after him and then kill him. It goes on to say and so, but the Bible is even at that point is well aware that there are just bad people. This is God giving rules for his people. This is, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Haiti has, I don't know, listen, if you got a few coins and you live in Haiti, leave Haiti. Yeah, and they, yeah, it's coming to Florida, yeah. What do I think you ought to do? I'll I'll tell you in just in just a second. I'll tell you in a second, but one of the, (laughs) one of the absolute, have you ever just seen a video and you said to yourself, this is just stupid. Everybody involved is stupid, but then there seems to be one person in the midst, in this grand sea of stupidity that sticks out as the grand poobah of stupidity. Have y'all seen one of those videos like, what in the world? Huh? What's happening here? This person needs to be off the street. I don't care, medicated or whatever, just away from the rest of society. Here is an example of a person who did not grow up right. She was not taught right. Just raised wrong, as they say. Folks in the South said, you just raised wrong. That's all. Listen, it's not your fault. We we don't blame you. you. Your mom and daddy just raised you wrong. It's them. You just bad parenting. Here is here is Tays in Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Hey, Fort Worth. There's, now there's some bad spots in Fort Worth. <laughs> some bad spots in Fort Fort Worth is boom. Fort Worth used to be two three hundred thousand. Now it's eight hundred thousand. But and what comes with that? Crime. Crime. But. Here is an example of a person who was brought up wrong, and I, you could just probably, I'm judging, I know, 
I'm, I'm making an assessment that this person is um, probably not chaste sexually. Probably not chaste sexually, so she's probably got some kids. And I don't think they're going to get the right training. But who knows? Maybe the Lord will touch her heart and grow her. Do you know someone told me, my daughter told me, I got to tell you this, profound thinking. Do you know my daughter told me? <laughs> and I laughed at her and did, I didn't go off on her, but I, I let her know how absolutely, utterly stupid, she, not she is, but the statement that she said. She was talking about how racist they are out there in Denton. My daughter has no idea what the streets or the hood looks like. None whatsoever. Denton is the worst place she's ever lived in. <laughs> she says to I just looked at her and I asked her, who are, who are your parents? Who are your parents that would even allow you to think that? And that now I'm her daddy, so. <laughs> because we have this, this, this world where we think and we say that everything is somebody else's fault or their problem. They, they did it. It's, it's not us. Yeah, I was, I was doing 80 in a school zone, but the only reason they pulled me over was because they're racist. There wasn't no sign that said I couldn't drive this fast on the sidewalk. They're profiling me, and that's wrong. I'm the only one they got that was driving 80 on the sidewalk, and, they, and, they, and they're racist. But this young lady here, of all the stupid things that you've seen in I don't know how long, if this does not take the cake of one of the dumbest, ignorant. By the way, I'm going to get to the video in a second. My mother, some of y'all know this, this term when you call somebody a, a, a heifer. <laughs> and she would say it when someone's just stupid. She said, this little dumb heifer here. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. And I was trying to figure out how do you spell that? Not heifer. <laughs> but I thought about my mother. If she were alive. What would she say about this young lady who takes the cake in the sea of stupidity? She's a stupidity boy. Y'all know what a boy is, a little thing in the ocean that lets you know where you are? I just need, you know what? Let me just play the clip. Police say it happened at around 3.10 p.m. As one man attempts to intervene, appearing to remove the keys from the ignition, the woman gains control of the wheel, nearly mowing down her target. Now, I need to let you all know what's happening. These two ladies, these two black ladies, <laughs> young ladies, are having an argument. And if I hear it correctly, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know. One girl, I think she says, on my babies, on my baby daddies. I don't know what she's saying. One hood girl to another hood girl. And the other girl in the car is a little bit upset and the guy tries to kind of help. Now, this is at a gas station in Chicago. Chicago. Where are you at, Lisa? <laughs> and she gets upset. The other girl is challenged. I, I bet you won't run us over. Something like that. that. That's the whole conflict. And so the guy's trying to help her out. Trying to help her out. By the way, Tom, a lot. That's the point. That's the point. We'll get that in a second time. We'll get that in a second time about, about what you just asked. Because we, we, we need to cover that issue. And so she's challenged. I bet you won't run us over this and that or whatever. Like, I bet you I will. Okay. Smashing everything in her path. <laughs> just when everyone thought it was over, the woman in the Explorer races onto Harlem Avenue. And footage obtained by CBS2, the SUV is seen crashing into a sedan waiting at a red light, flipping over. The woman, who is not wearing a seatbelt, according to eyewitnesses, emerges from the SUV. She flipped the whole truck. Told you. She gets out. Ha, 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 ha. What are you laughing at? You just wrecked your car. First of all, you just hit these other cars. Hit that car. She wrecks her car. Walk, comes over. I don't know what she's doing. Goes back to her car, grabs her purse and stuff. Comes back and begins to try to fight again. 
Now she tries when the police come, they she runs away and they catch her. Where where are you where are you going in your mismatch in your mismatch flip flops? Where are you going? In your hot pink hoochie suit. Where are you going? But this is culture. Now, to the brother that was speaking earlier, do we see a lot of this in the white community? Do we see a lot of this in the Asian community? Truth be told, we don't see a lot of this in the Hispanic community. We got a problem, guys. No, no, Michelle, there were there were there were no children in the uh in the SUV. If they were, she she would have forgot about them too. She would have forgot about them too. Why is this an issue? Well, I I do think that there is a demonic component. Corey, you're talking about demons. We always talk about demons. We just said that Christians don't have it, which tells us what the what the uh, absolute cure is. But this is this and tell can I, okay. Can I ask you guys a question? I don't want to ask you white folks a question because some people, yeah, I know. Listen, Neela, I understand. I understand. I understand. Listen, white folks stand up. White folks stand up. I understand. There are some crazy white people too. There are. There are. There are. We see them every time we go to Walmart. I'm kidding. But I can't ask you white folks this question because if you answer the question, it'll be just like you, like us answering it. Someone is going to say you're being racist. So I just ask the black folks this question. All you, all you black folks in the chat. I know there's some crazy white folks. I do. I do know that. I do. Listen, I, I, I know some. But how many of you black folks know somebody like her? Not maybe not maybe in your family, maybe close by. How, how many of you know somebody like that? Just, now, <laughs> a lot of us do. That shouldn't be the case. That that shouldn't be the case. That's the point. We did, I did, growing up, we didn't know that many crazy people like that. There was always one criminal around that everybody kept their eye on. Now it's like there's one good guy around that everyone's keeping their eye on and make sure he stays upright. This is what we're dealing with. I think, I think we need to bring back an awful lot of strict discipline. And I'm talking when I say when I say strict and I mean harsh, I mean strict and I mean harsh. The writer of Hebrews puts it this way: all discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruits of righteousness. Let me tell you the truth. There are three kinds of fools. Three kinds of fools in the world. By the way, at one point in time, you were part of the fools, three kind of fools. And you better not get these fools, these three, these three types of fools confused. Three types of fools. There is the fool who doesn't want to be a fool anymore. Hopefully that's all of us. The fool who doesn't want to be a fool anymore. The fool who doesn't know how to, to stop being a fool who can't help the fool who can't help being a fool and the fool who wants to be a fool. And you have to make sure you understand which one is which, because if you apply the wrong treatment with the wrong one, you're going to have a problem. Now the fool who can't help it, we give him grace. We pray for him. The fool who doesn't want to be a fool, that's all of us. Praise God. That's growing. That's learning. But the fool who don't care, the fool who wants to stay a fool, when you try, and we've all done it, when you've tried to treat him or her like the first fool or the second fool, you're going to get yourself in trouble. They're going to kill somebody or kill you or kill themselves. Just a fact. Which is why I say, well, I had a buddy tell me this. His father told him this, and I said that, I said, you know what, that's a good statement. I like that statement. He said, when you find a dummy, his father told him, said, son, when you find a dummy, leave him one. When you find a dummy, leave him one. Some folks, you're going to try to help, and you're going to end up helping yourself to the grave, too. There are just some fools who want to stay fools. There are some. And then there's us kind of, the, us kind of fools, the sheep fools 
who know we are and don't want to be fools anymore. We need to learn the difference. And when you discipline someone who doesn't want to be a fool, who wants to grow, they'll grow from it. And then there's those who you discipline. There's some folks they can't get past, they like can't get right. And there's some others who re, who relish and rejoice in their foolishness, in their stupidity, in their sinfulness. There are those. Too many of us are like that. And I say that because it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. I believe that what's really needed is some discipline at home. One of my favorite verses as we were raising our kids was this verse. Proverbs 23, 13. Do not hold back discipline from the child. Although you strike him, or some verses might say, if you beat him with the rod, he shall not die. If you beat him, he shall not die. You, you shall strike him with the rod and rescue his soul from Sheol. You shall beat the living daylights out that boy <laughs> and keep from going to hell. If you beat him, he shall not die. If you beat him, he shall not die. Oh, you're right. You're right, glorious love. Ain't no fool like an old fool. <laughs> the only difference between an old fool and a young fool, at least an old fool has figured out how to make it <laughs> for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But if you beat him, they shall not die. As a matter of fact, you're going to save not only him and her, but other people around them. That's what's going to happen. If you beat them, they shall not die. I want to play this. You all tell me if, um, you all tell me if what they're saying is making sense. Now, this is in Chicago. Y'all have heard what happened recently in, in Chicago with the kids kind of running rampant. There might be some good points that are stated in here as well. You, you all tell me what you think. And an opportunity to enjoy the city. That's absolutely entirely important. Um, there are a few that came with different intentions, and they have, they have and they will be dealt with. Um, but I'm not going to um, use your language, which I think is um, wrong, uh, to say there's mayor. Now, that is Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who is on her way out. She is saying that she doesn't like to use the term with these youth that went crazy in Chicago, mayhem. And she said a f there was a few. No, ma'am, it was not. It was not a few. And 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 if you don't, mayhem was a nice way of putting it. But she didn't want to deal with it. Fine. But I want you to hear, watch a little bit more footage, and then there's a lady, an older woman, who comes up and see if she makes some points. You tell me. Now, although Mayor Lightfoot disagrees with this description, this was indeed the mayhem experienced over the weekend. Hundreds of teenagers at 31st Street Beach, reports of fights breaking out. Also, someone throwing a brick through a parked city vehicle. Then along Michigan Avenue, outside the iconic Millennium Park Saturday, even more chaos. Young people jumping and dancing on cars, also on CTA platforms, smashing windows. In fact, two teens were shot in the first block of East Washington Street. Also, a man in his 40s was allegedly attacked by a group of, group of teens. How do you justify something like this? You don't. I don't justify this behavior. But think about this. Would they be downtown if they had things in their own community? Had we passed the peace book like young people asked us to, stuff like this would happen. Absolutely, you should be held accountable for doing things like that. But they would not be in these spaces if we provided them. We told y'all this was going to happen 15, 20 years ago. This is what happens when you close schools. This is what happens when you take away after school programs. This is what happens when you don't invest in them on the front end. What do you all think? Now, this is where you guys come in. What do, what do you think? And again, guys, on sometime next week, we're going to have a panel discussion and we're going to talk, go a little bit more in depth into this. But what do you all think? What do you, what, what do you all think about what she said? She said that, you know, this is what happens when you don't fund school programs or when you don't have thing, basically things for them to do after school and so forth. What, what do you all think? Is, is, is there any truth to that? Is there any? Now, I'll say this. There might be, but I will also say this, that me growing up in the 70s, we didn't have those programs anyway. We, we didn't have that stuff anyway. And so after school programs, what after school programs? Go home, get your homework done, clean your, clean your room. And then you can go outside for a little bit. That was an after-school program. 
we didn't have that kind of stuff. We we playing basketball or football or what have you on the street. Car comes by, we move out the way, and <laughs> that's how it was. So y'all, you all tell me. Someone said that are, are they moving? Okay, I'll fix. I will fix that. I will fix that. Let's. But I, 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 now this is where I, I want to hear from you guys. Nathan says, school programs have not helped uh, as much as they were supposed to. Most turn into certain, they, that's true too. That's true too. Uh, ben says, big government uh, misses the point. And by the way, by the way, by the way, cause someone, listen, I don't watch, <laughs> I don't watch Fox News. I don't watch CNN. I'll, I'll check out them all from time to time. Um, but I don't get my talking. My This is what I'm saying today is what everyone used to say. Most folks used to say 30, 40 years ago anyway. But do, should there. When you try, sadly, the you will still look for trouble. Yeah. We glorify that. And, and I think one of the biggest problems is. If you act up. If you act, what do you say? The consequences of not having an after-school program is not turning. What I have to say is moving too fast for me. Is not turning into gremlins and terrorizing the city. <laughs> uh, that there's it. That's it. Needling fatherlessness, godless homes, uh, is the problem, without question. But let me ask you guys a question. Okay, what'd you say? Ronald Reagan closed down all the programs and introduced drugs into the black. <sighs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mario. I like Mario. You know, y'all know why I like Mario? Because Mario don't care what he says, even if it makes absolute. Okay, Mario, how old are you, Mario? <laughs> how old are you, Mario? And then why did you just say that? I don't recall Ronald Reagan shutting anything down. So I need to ask you a question, Mario. I, 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 Mario, I need you. You might be right, brother. You Listen, teach us, brother. Mario, how old are you? Come on, Mario. We, we want to know. What was Nancy Reagan's uh, <laughs> just saying? That no, didn't work. It didn't work. But no, I don't... I, Maybe, maybe Mario, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering. We ought to take a poll on how old we all think Mario is. Mario, how old are you, though? Because I want to ask you some questions. I remember, I remember Reagan being elected. I remember, the, I remember the day, I happened to be home. I happened to be home the day from school when Reagan got shot. I remember that, too. I remember Reagan, um, the end of his term. But I remember prior to Reagan, I remember, I remember when Carter got elected. I remember prior to Carter. Do you know what I remember, Mario, before Reagan, before Carter, before Ford and Nixon? You know what I remember? Drugs in the community, Mario. That's what I remember, Mario. I remember drugs in the community. You can listen. We listen. Mario says he's done with you. Okay. I asked you a question. You made a statement. Fine. This is the channel for you, Mario. So that, that's fine. I asked you a question. Mario, there were drugs in the community before there was Reagan. We even have we even have movies. Listen, even if you don't want to actually do your reading, you can go look at a movie about Bumpy Johnson. He was bringing he was bringing drugs. As a matter of fact, I said, let's go get it. Let's go get him directly. There's this, there's there is one of the dumbest statements that I that I hear people say. They say it. It's unfounded. They hear someone else say it and they go with it. They'll say that, well, how did, how else do drugs get in the black community? We don't have flat. We don't have planes. We ain't flying that in. That sounds good. When you hear that sounds good. We hear that. It, re it, it really does. Sorry, Nora. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Alton, <laughs> I'm your pusher man. Where'd that, where'd that song come from? What's, what is that song about? It's not a guy. Now, by the way, it's not a Christian song, but it is old, old head classic. But they would say things like they're not flying that stuff in. Blacks are not flying that stuff in. We're not flying that stuff in. How? How's it getting in? If the white man ain't bringing it in. 
Maybe you might want to befriend your friendly neighborhood drug dealer. He's around. He'll tell you. Let me help you out. This is how this works. Somebody in some place else is producing this stuff. They're bringing it across the border. They're bringing it across the border in different ways. Mules, they're bringing on planes. They are bringing it um, ships, all sorts of ways, all sorts of ways. Here's what happens. I know this for a fact. Listen, two of my best friends are no longer drug dealers, but they were, and they were, they were moving some weight. One of my cellmates was a heavyweight drug dealer heavyweight drug dealer and <laughs> by the way my father was a drug dealer before he went to prison my mother used drugs i i know a, a little bit about it and what would happen is you would go there there would be a connect from someone who's bringing it in to someone who is on the street and he might distribute to somebody else what have you but anyway the way it gets to your local without all that being talked about the way it gets to your local neighborhood is somebody who looks like you in that neighborhood brings it in. White folks can't bring the drugs into a black community. They, they wouldn't make it out. Nor blacks can't take it into a to a Hispanic community. Hispanics can take it to a black community. That's just how it is. If you got if you're in a black community and there are drugs there, somebody black brought it in. If you're Hispanic in a Hispanic community, somebody Hispanic brought it in. That's the way it is. You not bringing that into someone else's territory. Tank tank gonna happen. You will not make it out. Your drugs will stay, you won't. That's how drugs get. You don't have to have a plane to fly. You need a plane to fly drugs in? Did you need a plane to fly the uh, <laughs> the tomatoes in? Did you need the planes to fly the french fries and ketchup in? Did you need? No, no. Somebody put on a truck and drove it in. That's how that happens. That's how that happened. And I would say that the whole, the freeway, the freeway, Rick Ross, there's a whole lot of holes to that, guys. A whole lot of holes to that. Now, there are, there are some aspects of it that are true. There's also a whole lot of holes that I won't go into that. But the point, the fact of the matter is this. And here's the point, guys. I wouldn't care if, if the federal government, let's say they did, if the federal government came in and dropped a boatload of fentanyl and crack and weed in front of my house, you know what would happen? I would say it would sit there. It wouldn't because somebody would come and get it. But if no one else touched it, it would go untouched. You you bringing it is not going to make me use it or sell it. You bringing it is not going to make me pick up a gun and shoot somebody else who looks like me or looks like anyone else to make money off of it. That's not going to that's not that that doesn't happen. When I, I I'll never forget. Now this is me. I'm I'm in I'm in the the TV room talking to all these guys, these drug dealers, asking what white man made you pick up the sack. None. I did because I was trying to make some money. Just like what white men made you get two, three, four, five baby daddy. I mean, uh, baby daddy. So you don't want that. Four or five babies from different women. The white men didn't do that either. We are not so slow and not so dumb where we can't hold ourselves accountable. That's the danger, Mario, and other folks that, that we have. By the way, Mario, thank you for the super chat. But that's the danger. when we, Because people will tell you, Mario, go back and look in time Look in history, folks who did not like, who were not friends or friendly with the white community like a Malcolm X, he's saying the same thing. We're not so dumb that we can't take care of ourselves and be responsible. I don't need you to think that I'm so slow that I've got to have you, that I've got to have you make excuses for me. No, no, no. You miss what I'm saying. I'm not saying we shouldn't try. What I'm saying is we should hold folks accountable like we used to, Mario. Do y'all know what we used to do as a black community, as a community, what we used to do? We would hold the bad people accountable. We didn't have this anti-snitch policy. If you're in the community killing other people who look like folks in the community, you got to go. You're not part of this community. You're a traitor. We don't want you around. You got to go. But now we have an anti-snitch community, so folks are getting killed, and we don't care. And then they kill us, or kill family members of ours. Yeah, this little ant, no, 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 no. Sorry, guys. So listen, that's just wrong. The same way, Mario, that you take care of your children, you being a good father, the same way that I'm trying to do, and a lot of these other brothers in this chat are doing, is the same way we should expect other men. If someone, if you get someone pregnant, we expect you to take care of that baby. 
We're not looking for you. Like the lady was saying, we're not looking for you. Now, she said well, there should be some programs. The program you need is find the daddy. Where's the daddy? Where is the father? Let's bring the father back and help that. Help the family with that. Let's get, let's give, let's ostracize every man who's got four or five kids out there. Let's make him feel bad. Now, by the way, this issue with crime, that, we, that one of the things that we can do as a society is this right here. Look at, look at this passage. Look at this passage. Because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed quickly, therefore the hearts of the sons of men among them are given fully to do evil. Let me read it again. Because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed quickly, therefore the hearts of the sons of men are given to do evil fully or given to do fully, fully to do evil. What does that mean? A person does a crime and we take 5, 10, 15, 20 years to deal, deal with that person. This person gets bail, goes out, do some more, gets bail, goes, no. Hit them and hit them hard quickly. If, look, here's how we know. Have any of you ever touched fire? Have you ever put your hand in fire? Maybe the fire on the stove or somebody was burning something, piece of paper, you touched the fire. Have any of you ever touched fire? I mean, literal fire, not, not metaphorical fire, not an allegorical fire, not spiritualized. No, an actual real life, honest to goodness flame. Have you ever done that? How many times have you done that? I did it once. I did it once. Did it once. You know why I did it once and only once? Because the fire is not going to delay hurting me. The fire is not going to say, you know, he didn't mean to. I'll, I'll burn him. I'll let him feel the, the pain. Let him know. I felt it immediately and I learned. Guess what? Won't do that again. Will not do that again. I think I said earlier, I didn't see a lot of kids, me personally, growing up, a lot of kids, a lot of little bitty kids, black, white, or Hispanic. We didn't have a lot of Hispanics growing up. We didn't. Matter of fact, I, the first Mexican I saw was 1991. Yeah. Now we had some Puerto Ricans. We had Puerto Ricans, but you know, they hung out with the blacks and we had, we had some Dominicans and they hung out with us too. So, but I never saw a kid throw a tantrum, black, white, or Hispanic. You know why? At least from where I was, the moment you threw a tantrum was the moment that you got popped. Who, what, do you, what? Are you trying to bring attention to me, to yourself? And therein lies a problem. We've got kids. We've got adults who want to bring attention to themselves. They want to be seen. And if you take away that ability to be seen, you don't see a lot of blacks, whites, or Hispanics or anyone acting up in the army. You know why? You don't see them acting up in the military. Anybody been in the military? I'll tell you guys one day about my military experience. Corey, you were in the military? Yep, I'll tell you about it one day. One day when I get up, when I get up enough courage to tell you all why, what happened. But what happens in the military? Wait a second, I see USMC. That means if I, listen, if I've got my letters correct, I would assume that USMC stands for United States Marine Corps. Janae was in the military. Okay, cool. Who else? Dinah says her husband. Can I ask you guys a question? Those that were in the military or your family members were in the military, did they dress differently? She was in the military. Did any, did, 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 you, did you wear your own uniform the way you want to? You know what? I ain't wearing the green one. I'm going to wear a yellow. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm not down with these black boots. Nope. I seen some nice red ones. No. Implied in the uniform is uniform. We're going to look the same. Do you know what they make you do in prison also? Look the same. Nope. Won't be any. You know why? If you dress differently in prison, that is going to be a reason for someone to get jealous and take what you had. That's true. Just like in a lot of these schools. Now, are the uniforms the be all in all? No. But what it does is it's trying to ingrain in you. One, you're not that special. I think people need to get that to their head. You ain't that special. Nothing, nothing special about you. Your breath stinks in the morning like everybody else's. So 
you just a part of this big old machine. And they would tell you, you, my friend, are replaceable. Get out of line, you're replaceable, and we'll punish you. Matter of fact, if you make us have to replace you, we'll punish you while we're replacing you. Nothing wrong with that. Because it's not about you. But we don't tell kids that. We tell kids it is about you. Express yourself. It's all, that's why that little girl wanted her phone back. And what did she get? She got a beat down. <laughs> that, that, that substitute teacher who, I don't know what she was wearing. That was not what a teacher supposed to be wearing. But that teacher gave it to her. I mean, it, you know what's funny? I shouldn't say this, but I know a lot of teachers. I know for a fact. <laughs> we're watching that video. They can't comment on it because they're teachers. But they're like, yeah, amen, amen. And the students are like, yeah, you had it coming. You, you had it coming. What do we do? And I'm not going to go too far into it because we're going to cover this again on next week with the, with the panel. And they're going to probably they're going to give more of what they think than than what I than what I think. But let me just tell you what you ought to be doing, it, because right now neither you nor I can change this. All we can do is protect ourselves. This is what the Bible says, what God says in His Word. A prudent, excuse me, a prudent man sees evil and hides himself, gets away from it. It's what a prudent man, a wise man, would do. The naive proceed and pay the penalty. The naive proceed and dum, 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 and just walk right into it. It's okay. Make excuses. It's all right. All right, fine. Let them kill you. Meanwhile, we're moving. Moving. If this is where the crime is, then that's where I won't be. That's where my kids won't be. Moving to a smaller location is looking better and better now. Being in a place where high concentration, and, and it used to be that you didn't have to worry about this stuff happening like, like in Chicago and the Magnificent Mile down on Michigan Avenue. You didn't used to worry about that kind of stuff. They got enough police down there. But what's going to happen is some kids are going to start getting shot. Some kids are going to start getting killed. And then folks are going to rally and march that the police shouldn't have shot those kids that were coming at them with guns. No, you should have just took, no. But that's really what it, what it takes. For somebody... Unfortunately, for somebody to be put down and to be made an example of. Yeah, that that's the sad part. Police are uh, evacuated. People are like, I don't want to do it. The same reason that teachers are leaving the professions, the same reason that, people, that, that, that uh, police are. I can't do my job, and I've got to do more than what I have, and you're, you're handcuffing me? No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And the element that we do not think about is... The demonic element. All that to get to this point. There is a demonic element to this. If you think the enemy has does not have designs on our young people. Now I'm afraid. I am afraid. And I've asked this of people who are coming into the to the panel discussion to think about this as well. Have we or are we losing a large portion of this generation to the devil? And when I say losing, I don't mean like, ah, eh, we're doing good, we got to fix this. No, I mean we ought to go ahead and just take a black marker and just mark through them. Half of the kids. Half of the kids are lost. Is that the case? And I, and don't let the fact that they're 14 or 15 or 16 or 17 or whatever, don't, that, yeah, I get that, but they can, they can squeeze the trigger just as much as, as a 40-year-old could. They can stab you. They can do all kinds of things. The same way they're just not mentally there. And as bad as some of these kids are, how bad are they going to be later? Are have we lost? And I'm wondering what I'm praying, I'm praying for you. I am praying for you. My my wife's a teacher, and I, baby, listen, do you want to keep teaching? I, I, <laughs> come on home and leave this stuff. And it has nothing to do with funding. Teachers aren't now. Teachers are complaining about their their salary, for good reason. They take everything they can out of you, out of uh, your salary. Your, your health care is is horrible. All this stuff like that, but you still want to teach the kids, and they 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 hamstring you. A kid can go off on you, cuss you out, want to fight you, 
you send them out, and then in about five, ten minutes, they send the kid right back to your classroom. What do you do? It's rough out there. Now, me, I told my wife, baby, you got options. The first time they act up, call me. You don't have to work there anymore. <laughs> you don't have to work there anymore. The first teacher or the first parent, male parent, male parent, the first male parent that, that, that says the wrong thing, I can take it for me, but I can't take it for them. I'll be there. I'm like Michael Jackson, Jackson 5. I'll be there. But it's hard being a teacher. It's hard, it's hard being a police officer. Are, are there some bad police officers? Yes, there are some bad police officers. There are some bad bank tellers. There are bad, I would say, uh, stockers, not stockers, but uh, grocery baggers, but they don't even bag your grocery anymore. Service is horrible nowadays. I just want to throw that in there. But there are bad people everywhere in every segment of society, including police officers. But that's always been the case. But we've never had the society we've had now where our kids are more of the problem than the adults. And we're going to find out that a lot of these kids that are acting this way, there are a lot of them that do have fathers there. Yeah, I, yeah. There, there are parents that want to try to fight. The, if it used to be that if my my parents got a call from school, it didn't matter. If the, there was one time where the teacher, I mean, the teacher lied. I mean, the teacher lied. My father didn't care. <laughs> oh, my father! I love I love my daddy, but my father did not care. I got to come up here and deal with this. I told you, my father and mother, both the same. They, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what they say in front of the white folks when they're dealing with me. Mm-hmm. Wait till you get home. I'm going to kill you. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. It won't be a problem. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make you cry. I'm going to hurt you. So, mm-hmm. Thank you, ma'am. I, I apologize. Daddy, would you apologize? I didn't. <laughs> Don't kill me. I wanted to run away. <laughs> In, in which situation? One of the young people, are you mean the one uh, in Atlanta? I mean, not Al Atlanta, Alabama. And do, does anybody know what that was about? Now, two of the kids were brothers, 17 and 16. There's six been arrested so far, all young. 20, I think from 15 to 20, ages 15 to 20. And so... We'll just keep doing the same cycle where we bury them, complain about it, look for a program. Meanwhile, we won't hold folks accountable. So, guys, um, I wish there was a... There, there, now, there is an, an, an explanation and there is a cure for all of this. Here's the sad part. And I don't want to leave you on the sad part, but I do want you all to be aware. The sad part, the truth is, it's not getting better. So what you have to do is be aware and be godly and be wise for yourself. The passage that I said before, I'll put it up again. A prudent man sees evil and hides himself, gets away from it. The naive proceeds and pay the penalty. We can fix it. No. The Bible does not tell us that the world is getting better. We're not. We're not. It's, it, it's just not getting better. And I know there are some theological systems that says that it is. And that we are going to end up taking over the world and end up running the way God will. It's not, it's not going to happen. You see the trajectory, the trajectory of this world. By the way, that was popularized when the world looked like it was getting better. It's going to get worse. Jesus, Jesus, said, Jesus literally says so. So you need to make sure that you do. If that means moving away, I, listen, if you're black and you move away from a whole bunch of black folks to make sure your family's safe, do that. Move away from Hispanic. Hey, those rowdy, crazy white folks we know they're out there, you got to move away from them, move away from them. If you see evil, get away from it. Protect your family, but at the same time, also tell them, let them, if your kids, if you got kids that want to stick out and be different, tell them to be godly. You'll stick out then. Be holy. You'll stick out then.
Well, no, I did talk about it. If you're talking about, if you're talking, listen, the two, the two solutions that need to take place. One is a father at home, but then more than that is a father in heaven. Now I've covered that. I've covered that. How now the issue, the problem is this, and this is why I said, have we lost a generation? The problem is there's a father is not at home. What plan do you have in place to go and put a father at home? This father has four or five kids spread around. What's the program that you're going to do to make him be in the household with all, all, the, all four of his kids? There, there is no such program. There is no such program. Now, we'll talk about what the church can do to kind of um, uh, mitigate that. But at present, we don't have that. What the world needs is the gospel. So we do that. We give the gospel as best we can, as much as we can. How much, how many people are going to come to the word of the Lord? Jesus didn't tell us the exact number, but he said few. And I don't know what few is, but that ain't a lot. So now you got to think, well, what do we do as a body in the meantime? What do we do? And who knows, may, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this all turns around and the world becomes godly. You can, And so until it does, which is what I need to get my, you know what, I'm, I am calling tomorrow to get my glasses fixed because I thought you said I can agree with that and I thought I can't agree with that. I'm sorry. And they, they've been telling me, they've been telling me, Corey, you need to either get, get the, the, the writing on the computer bigger or get you some better glasses. Probably both. <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> but... So our issue is what are we going to do in the meantime? And so next week we're going to have this discussion. I won't tell you who all is going to be part of the panel. Uh, most of these people you may have may have already known uh, from various different backgrounds. And we'll just have a discussion. I'll just kind of moderate it, facilitate it, and then they'll do more of the speaking, I think. But uh, in the meantime, guys, be safe. But this is where, as, we, as they say in the church, you got to be prayed up. <laughs> you, you have to be prayed up or else you'll be ate up. So guys, I want to thank you so much. Thank you for the, uh, for those that gave the super chat as well. Um, be blessed. I will see you all on tomorrow. God bless you.